Welcome to The Brave Place, where we journey into the lives of brave men and women who have beat the odds or who are in the trenches right now. Difference makers who have truly discovered the warrior that lives within and are living it out. This is the place that will inspire, encourage, enlighten, and challenge that brave person that lives deep down within all of us. Welcome back to the Brave Place Podcast. I'm your host, Christy Rodriguez. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Uh, Recently in the studio at the KLRC radio station, which many of you know, the Brave Place Podcast is a part of the KLRC Podcast Network. Uh, We wanted to invite Michelle in. She has a powerful story. It's about she and her daughter, Amber, and we wanted to share that with you. This podcast is not the typical one that I usually do where I have more of a conversational interview. Instead, Michelle came in and we just gave her the mic and let her roll with it. And the courage and bravery that Michelle brought into the studio inspired all of us. It was such a blessing and a gift. And that is our same hope for you as you listen today as she shares about her daughter, Amber, and what happened in 2017. And again, Thank you for pouring out your heart and soul, Michelle, and trusting us with that. It matters, and we're grateful. Here's their story. Amber was the most caring person I know. She would give you the shirt off her back. All her friends told me, they were like, she, she was such a sweet person. She If somebody needed money for lunch or whatever, she was like, here, I'll buy your lunch today. She was always worried about mom. She was very caring. She... She loved life. She was a good kid. I was I was so proud of her. It was 16 when she got her CNA license. And so she started working at a nursing home. She wanted to help people as much as she could. And I think that's why she went into the field that she did, because she knew that she could help people when they needed it the mm-hmm. most. So it was November the 6th, 2017. Um, it was her dad's birthday. I was leaving for vacation. I was taking a vacation, which I've never done was very excited. She worked at the airport at the time. She could go down and sit with me while I was waiting for my flight. Well, she had been up all night streaming. She'd been up all night doing a charity stream for children because that's just who she was. She always liked to do stuff like that, her and her brother both. And she'd been up all night and I kept asking her, can you please just ride with your brother? I don't want you driving. You've been up all night. And she's like, no, I want to, I want to go down to the terminal with you and sit with you and have breakfast and you know, chat with you before you leave. She's 18 year old. You can't tell an 18 year old what to do. (laughs) And so I got out of the car. We went in, we got, went to Annie Ann's, got something to eat, sat down and ate. She said, mom, I'm starting to get tired. And I said, okay, well, do you want me to get you a Starbucks coffee or something? So you have, and she goes, no, I have my monster energy drink in the car. And I was like, okay. So she left and I was, you know, sitting there just scrolling through Facebook And I saw a post on Facebook that said there was an accident on Highway 72 in Pew Ridge and they had closed the highway. And I was like, well, that's weird. You know, normally they don't do that unless it's really bad. And so I put on the post. I hope, you know, everyone's okay, not knowing it was her. And I kept scrolling through Facebook, you know. And so then I at that point I had texted her and I said, you know, please let me know when you make it home. And I didn't hear back from her. And I was like, well, she's probably stuck in traffic and doesn't want to be on her phone and get in trouble. And so then I, you know, started scrolling through Facebook again and I saw a picture of her car, the back of her car. Didn't know for sure if it was her car, you know, because there's lots of Chevy Aveos all over Northwest Arkansas. So I was like, that really looks like Amber's car. And I was like, you know, I'm just being a paranoid parent. You know, that's what we do when we hear there's accidents. We automatically think it's our children. And so I called her dad and I was like, hey, is Amber home yet? And he was like, no. And he said, what time did she leave? And I said, well, at least it's been at least 20, 30 minutes. I said, and there's been an accident on Highway 72. And I said, I swear to you, I just saw her car on Facebook. I said, but I don't know that it's her car for sure. He goes, okay, where was the accident? And I told him and he said, okay, I'm going to go down there. And I said, okay, thank you. He goes down there and he calls me and he goes, okay, I'm here. He goes, I can't see anything. They have it blocked off pretty well where you can't see what's going on. He said, I spoke to the cop and he said he would send the state trooper over as soon as, you know, um, they'd get done doing their investigation. I I was like, okay. I said, well, what should I do? Should I go ahead and get on the plane? He goes, yes, because if it's not her, she'll be mad at you for not going on your vacation. So I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, 
I'm sure it's not her. Everything's going to be fine. And I'm holding my phone the entire time. Then they call for us to board the plane. And I'm texting him anything yet. He goes, no, not yet. And I was like, okay, well, we're about, I'm about to board my plane. And he's like, okay, just, you know, go ahead and go. And I'll, I'll get a hold of you as, you know, as quick as I can. And I was like, okay. So I get on the plane and I was like, okay, I just need to sit in my seat. I'm sure it's not her. I just need to relax. We landed and um, they came over the intercom and they said, we need everybody to remain in their seats. We have a situation we have to handle before we deboard the plane. So at that point, I took my phone out of airplane mode and I had a text from my son that says, mom, I need you to call me. Um, this I saw this lady come walking towards me on the plane and I was like, that must be one of the stewardess or something. She stopped at the aisle we were sitting in. She said, are you Michelle Webster? And I said, yes. And she said, I need you to come with me. Do you have any carry on? I was like, yeah, it's in the overhead compartment. So she got it down for me and we walk off the plane and I'm, I'm like, OK, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, it's weird. So we walk off the plane and there's a guy standing at the end of the aisle as you're walking off the plane. And I was like, oh, he's probably just going to clean or whatever. Then he started following us. And I was like, am I in trouble? And she was like, no, ma'am. She's like, I just need to take take you to the allegiant office to make a phone call. And I had a friend that I was meeting and I thought, well, maybe something's going on with the condo that we were staying in or something. And she needs to get a hold of me. We walk into the room and she says, I need you to call your ex-husband. And the minute those words came out of her mouth, I knew something was wrong. And I couldn't find his number in my phone. Finally found it. And I called him and he was like, we need you to come home. And I was like, I just landed in Orlando. Why do you need me to come back home? He was like, we need you to come home. And I was like, was she in the accident this morning? And he goes, yes. I said, is she okay? And he got complete silence on the phone. And I said, Michael, I need you to answer me. And he said, no, she passed away. And I said, oh my God, are you serious? And he said, yes. You know, they were trying to find a flight for me to get back. It was going to be like five or six o'clock before they could get me back. And then I got a phone call from my boss. He was like, hey, we're sending an associate up to be with you. And we're going to try to figure out a way to get you home. And so the associate came up there and his name was Trent. And he came up and sat with me and he was like, I'm so sorry. My boss was like, Michelle, I am so sorry this happened. He was like, we're going to do whatever we can to get you home as quickly as possible. So they figured out a way to do that. And I got home at like five or five thirty. When um, I got there, my boss was waiting. My my one of my best friends, Michelle Arvin, was waiting her mom. Um, my ex-husband, my son, my mom, my stepdad, um, Mike's family was there. And I was just like, I can't believe this is happening. Like still in shock. I was like, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it. Like what happened? And so Lloyd was like, mom, he was like, I think she fell asleep. I've talked to witnesses and he said the way they said she came over into the other lane. He said, I seriously believe that she fell asleep behind the wheel. And I said, well, I was worried about her doing that. And I said, that's why I kept asking her, do you need anything before you leave? And, she, you know, she's like, no, I'm fine. And I was standing there talking and I said, yeah, I said, you know, a friend posted, you know, hold your children close because you just never know when it's going to be the last time you talk to them. And I was like, at least I got to give her a hug. I mean, like, her dad didn't even get that. because She was supposed to wake her dad up and she didn't. And I said, at least I got to, you know, tell her I loved her one more time and everything. And I was just like, I can't believe this is happening. So, you know, we're all kind of in a fuzz. And then on my birthday, which was the next day, um, we planned her funeral. One of the hardest days of my life. Um, That's when we also got to see her for the first time. And that's when reality sunk in that she was really gone. Lloyd was like, I don't I don't get it. You know, she's only 18. She had her whole life ahead of her. The following day after we planned her funeral, we went to see her car and Lloyd's like, are you sure you want to do this? And I said, you don't understand. I need to know why she didn't make it. And I said, this will help me to understand. And the minute I saw her car, yeah, completely got it Um, because she hit a Jeep head on. Um, We actually knew the lady she hit because we live in a small town. (laughs) That's what happens. Lloyd went to high school with uh, one of her with her son I'm in contact with her as often as I can be after the accident and she'd had surgery. She's doing well. um, Thank goodness. I actually had a lady get a hold of me through a friend who was at the scene of the accident. She was at the gym and she said, I heard it. And the gym was pretty far from where the accident was, but she's like, it was loud. She said, so I ran out to see what was going on. 
She said she tried to help Amber get out of the car. She said, I, she said, I'm pretty sure she was gone. She said, I had felt for a pulse and she's like, I felt one, but she's like, I think, I don't know. I, during that time I could have been feeling my own because my heart was pounding out of my chest. And she said, I tried to get the door open and I couldn't get the door open. And then she's like, that's when she said she heard the lady she'd hit and went over to help her. And she said when she went back to the gym to call her husband to come get her, she looked down and there was a heart shaped rock on the sidewalk. She said that was not there when I went in the first time. She said, I fully believe that your daughter left that for me. And she I'm pretty sure she still has it to this day because she had it and she brought it to the funeral home on the visitation to show it to us just like little things. Um, so I took two weeks off from work. Um, I, my boss was like, are you sure that's all you want to do? And I was like, listen, I need to get back into the swing of things. If I stay too home, stay home too long. I'm not going to be able to get through life. Lloyd had me drive a week before I went back to work. He was like, we're going to drive that way because you're going to have to drive that way every day. So you need to drive that way before you go into the office. And I, we went into town and we went the opposite direction. And he goes, Mom, you're not listening. <laughs> I was like, we'll do it on the way back. So we did it on the way back. And of course, I started crying. He goes, this is why I wanted you to drive this way. So we get back to the house and the following week I got up and I was like, OK. And then I went back to work that Tuesday. And right as I got to the spot where it happened, Toby Mac came on the radio and it was Speak Life. And I was like, OK, Amber, I got this. I can do this because Toby Mac was her favorite Christian singer. We actually got to see him when he was at the amp um, a couple of years ago. It was fantastic. She was very excited. I have her Toby Mac hat that she got at the concert. I have it in, in my room. He comes on the radio every once in a while. And it's usually just like when I need him to, you know, you know, I need that distraction. It's a distraction from that moment so that I don't always think about the bad things. It helps me think about the good times that her and I had and and just, you know, inspires me. OK, you got this. You can get through the day. Let's do this. And usually there's always a song that comes on that's got some kind of message. And it's like, OK, that's what I needed this morning. So the year that he um, wrote his song 21 for his son, she would have been 21. And at first I didn't it didn't hit me. And then I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> All right, Toby, <laughs> stop talking through your music. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but he just does that. And then yesterday I was sitting at work and I heard the song um, See the Light. Mm -hmm. And I guess I'd never really listened to the words of that song, but it hit me pretty good yesterday. And it's just, you know, I'm thankful for that because that's her way of saying, Mom, you got this. She was always, you know, encouraging me. I know there was a reason. I don't understand it. I just get up every day and try to do the best that I can. I actually had a dream about her after she passed away. In the dream, it was me and her aunt, and we were standing in front of her casket, and I was crying. And she looked up at me, and she said, Mom, why are you crying? I said, Baby, you died. She's like, I know, but I'm okay. She's like, don't worry about me. I'm okay. And I just woke up at, like, at complete peace that mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, she's okay. Mm -hmm. She sends me signs. Her um, favorite animal was a sloth. We took her to the Promised Land Zoo. And she got to hold a sloth for her 16th birthday. She got to do that. And it was, you would have thought we'd given that child a million dollars. It was her favorite thing. I see sloths every once in a while. They'll just like, come like appear out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, I have a picture of her on my desk. It's my favorite senior picture of her. The first week that I went back to work, I looked up at it and, of course, immediately started crying. Mm. Um, but there's other days I look up at her and I'm like, yeah, we got this. You know, it's it's hard. I have my friends and stuff. They help me get through it, too. You know, those times when you're sitting at home by yourself, that's when it gets hard. Um, when I'm at home, I love my dog because that that was Amber's dog. She's the reason that we got our dog, Oakley. Because she's a Labradoodle. She weighs like 75 pounds. I'm like, this dog is huge, Amber. I don't want this dog. She's like, yes, we do want this dog, Mom. So we got the dog. We brought her home and I love her. She was there for me when Amber passed away. She always, she, if she sees me crying, she'll put her paw on my arm. And then, you know, she'll pull up my arm and I'll just give her a hug. You know, she helps me when I'm at home by myself. 
Um, I also, you know, will either listen to the radio or f- watch a movie that Amber liked. Zootopia, of course, was her favorite cartoon movie. The sloth in the movie, of course. So every time I see that, I just like I chuckle. This is funny. You know, this is what she loved. And she also liked High School Musical. Um, so I'll watch those every once in a while just to remember mm-hmm. her. You know, I'll watch something funny that her and I would have watched to help me get through those those difficult times. Um, mm-hmm. Or I'll call her brother because he talks in goofy voices and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So because they were both goofy. They weren't very far in age and they were always in cahoots with each other. Mm-hmm. But he got her a couple of times. He got her. He liked to get his sister. And so we try to do something on her birthday every yeah. year. Um, this year, we actually um, went to Worlds of Fun because she loved amusement parks. Loved them. And her brother actually got me on an upside down roller coaster, which I would never would have thought in a million years that would happen. But we always we always try to do something. And then we always try to do something on the anniversary of her passing. Mm-hmm. Last year... So we stop at the Harps and we always get flowers and, and all of that. And, and they happen to have a sloth balloon. And I was, I've never seen a sloth balloon there before. I've never even seen a sloth balloon. I was about to say, to think I have it. never seen a sloth balloon And in I was my like, life. at that moment, I was like, okay, I have to buy this. As, as you're going to, to the, the cemetery, cemetery, there's yes. a sloth balloon. Yeah. Man. Yeah. And we released balloons on the first year anniversary of her passing. We re- released balloons. We wrote messages mm-hmm. and we re- released pink and blue balloons. Mm. Um, and we watched them until they, mm. we couldn't see them any longer. Yeah. So we try to do something. And Lloyd was like, mom, you and dad really need to celebrate your birthdays. Mm. Cause you're not, you've not done that for the last three years. I know it's hard. But you need to do that this year. So he's actually taking us. Um, he's a him and his dad are huge chief fans. I'm a Giants fan. I've been a New York Giants fan since I was little. That's where I was born. The Giants and the Chiefs are playing this year in Kansas City. Oh, my goodness. And so he got his dad and I tickets to go see the game. And it's going to be the first NFL game I've ever been to. He's been with his dad a couple of times. And he goes, and I know you're going to wear your Giants gear and that's fine. But just know your team's going to get obliterated <laughs> by the Chiefs. And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> so I actually looked because I was yeah. like, I'm pretty sure the Giants have beat the Chiefs before when we've played them. 2017. Oh, wow. November of 2017. Wow. So right after his yeah, sister yeah, yeah. passed she away, was November six, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like November seventeenth or something like that. Because I actually looked it up. I know, um, in my heart, she would want me to get up every day and continue. So that's what keeps me going. When Amber passed away, I questioned a lot of things. I was mad. Like, why did you take her? And then, you know, the more I thought about it, I remember, you know, he does things for a reason. We may not understand those reasons, but you know, we have to. Trust in him because he's the way maker. He's the miracle worker and he's the promise keeper. So I know that someday I will get to see her again. I have to live life for her. And that concludes this episode of The Brave Place. Thank you again for joining us. We hope that Michelle's story brought a little bit of extra strength in your life today, whatever you're going through. We also shared a video interview with Michelle on our website at klrc.com. So be sure to check that out when you get a chance. And special thanks again to, to you, Michelle, for sharing your heart with us. And we know it wasn't easy and we appreciate you coming to the studio and blessing us with your story and with Amber's life. And God bless you all. Thanks again for joining us. If you have an idea for a future episode for The Brave Place, you can always email me at christy at klrc.com or christy at thebraveplace.org. And Christy is spelled C-H-R-I-S-T-Y. I would love to hear from you. Any ideas, any feedback. And until next time, have a brave day. Thanks for listening to The Brave Place part of the KLRC Podcast Network.